city of the angels. Greetings to you, fellow shut-in. I am Louise Palanker, and this is Quarantainment. I'm going to start off the show with a theory. I think I figured out why the run on toilet paper. We're finally learning just how much of this stuff people were stealing from work. There's probably also a run on post-its. It's just not as sexy. All right, I'm going to start out with some shout-outs. Jim Frankel recommends Dolly Parton's America podcast. Wendy Shapiro suggests 15 Broadway shows that you can watch online. I'm all about that. Steve Pabst writes, To soothe my soul after the announced postponement of the NOLA Jazz Fest, I watched three Grateful Dead documentaries, cracked open the vinyl vault, and listened to a half dozen albums. And for Rob Eisenberg, the lipstick color is Rouge à Lève which translates into English as Brown Four. Okay, so I'm a history buff, and I'm especially interested in the history of all the things I love. So that would be music, films, books, theater, photography. So I found a book that really captured my attention, and I think you're going to love it. It's called Tinseltown, colon, every great title has a colon, Murder, Morphine, and Madness at the Dawn of Hollywood, and it's by William J. Mann. It's a real-life murder mystery which takes place at the dawn of the film industry in 1920. A dashing and handsome director named William Desmond Taylor is murdered in his own home. There are three female suspects, all beautiful, ambitious, and desperate, including actresses Mary Miles Minter and Mabel Normand. The 20s are roaring through this book with scandal, drugs, debauchery, prohibition, the mafia, kingpins, cover-ups, grifters, blackmailers. It's hella dish. And the author believes that he, at last, has cracked the case. My phone's ringing. It's my brother. Hi, honey. Hey. I'm recording my little video show. Oh, right now? Okay. Well, I love the one yesterday. That's I did watch the uh, Harry and Tubman thing with uh, Ruby Dee. Oh, you watched it? Water. Yeah, yes, I wanted to talk to you about that. Wasn't that crazy uh, cool? Yeah, am I, am I being recorded for your show right now? Maybe. The button to hit stop is way on the other side of the camera. Call me when you're done with it. Okay? All right, I'll call you right back. Okay, love you. Okay, honey, love you. Bye. See, we're influencing shut-ins like you. And the author believes that he at last has cracked the case because I guess he got access to some newly released FBI files. I don't know. It's awesome. This is like the pad tie of books Everything in it is yummy. And this book inspired me to learn more about the history of Los Angeles. And so, I found a book called The Mirage Factory, colon, Illusion, Imagination, and the Invention of Los Angeles. It is a vivid account of the birth of modern Los Angeles, a city founded on manifold fantasies by strong-willed visionaries from best-selling author and masterful storyteller Gary Christ. The book focuses on three central and controversial figures. William Mulholland, D.W. Griffith, and Amy Semple McPherson. Mulholland was a motivated and brilliant immigrant ditch digger, and when he learned that L.A. could not grow any larger without more water, he said, oh, I'll go get water. And as we know from Survivor, that's a sign that he's up to something shifty. He designed the massive aqueduct system that would relocate water from farming communities, and so, at the expense of others, Los Angeles blossomed. D.W. Griffith transformed the motion picture industry from little more than a novelty to a lucrative and highly influential art form. He was also a bigot whose film Birth of a Nation set civil rights back for decades. Amy Semple McPherson was a charismatic evangelist who used radio to share her religious message, and she founded the Angelus Temple, which was the first megachurch. Also, she was fascinatingly nuts and early fodder for gossip rags when she disappeared and reappeared claiming she had been kidnapped when she was probably off cavorting with her lover. It's been rumored. All three were fatally flawed and what they built collapsed around them but left in its wake Los Angeles. Currently traffic free because everyone's home. The book I am currently reading is called Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste. Okay, her last name lacks a vowel. But did you know that you could go on YouTube and learn how to pronounce anything? You just put in, how do you pronounce N-G? Let me turn up the volume so we'll all learn together. You're messing with me, YouTube. 
How to pronounce NG. The following pronunciation is brought to you by pronouncenames.com. Thank you. Ing. 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 Do we have the correct pronunciation of your name? I don't want to get involved. So, the book that I am currently reading is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ing. It's about the unplanned family drama that unfolds in the very planned community of Shaker Heights, Ohio during the Clinton administration. This book is now a Hulu miniseries starring Reese Witherspoon and Carrie Washington. This promises scandaliciousness, yes? It just premiered on Hulu. I'm going to finish the book before diving into that, but yesterday it was trending on Twitter, so I will be reading my way through the remainder of the day. You stay safe and healthy. Call a friend you haven't spoken to in years. Keep an eye out for blessings. This is Quarantainment. I am Louise Palenker, and I will see you again soon. I know where to find you. Fill the jug with music. See you soon.